This is part 145 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to pass table name dynamically for stored procedure in SQL Server. So here is what we want to be able to do. We want to create a web page with a text box where we can enter a table name. Once we enter a table name and when we click this load data button, we want to load data from that respective table and display it on the web page as you can see here. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to make use of these two tables. I've already created these tables and here is the SQL script to create and populate them with test data. I will have the script available on my blog in case you need it. The next thing that we want to do is create a stored procedure to which we can pass this table name as a parameter. So let's flip over to SQL Server Management Studio, fire up a new query editor window and in here let's create a procedure. Let's name it SP Dynamic Table Name and to this we are going to pass table name parameter. And within the body of the stored procedure Let's first declare a variable. Let's call it RSQL and this is going to be of type care of max. And we're going to use this variable to hold our dynamic SQL statement. So our, here is our dynamic SQL statement. Select star from whatever table name that we are going to pass to this stored procedure. And then finally Let's use system stored procedure sp underscore execute SQL to execute our dynamic SQL statement. Now notice here we're passing table name as a parameter to the procedure and we are concatenating strings to build our dynamic SQL statements. In our previous video, we discussed that this is bad because it opened doors for SQL injection attacks. So the obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is why are we not creating parameterized SQL statements instead? The answer is we can't. SQL Server does not allow us to pass table names and column names as parameters. If we try to do that, we will get an error. Let's look at that in action. So instead of concatenating strings like this to build our dynamic SQL statement, let's use a parameterized SQL statement. So here we have a parameter within our dynamic SQL statement and the parameter type is care, and we are setting that parameter to a value that is coming into the stored procedure as a parameter. Now look at this. When I execute this, the command completed successfully but then if we try to execute the stored procedure, let's pass the table name as employees and when we execute this, Look at that, it throws an error, must declare the table variable at table name. So let's undo our changes. So the only way to pass a table name as a parameter to a stored procedure is like this by concatenating strings, but we know this open doors for SQL injection. We'll prove that in just a bit. But for now, let's go ahead and alter this procedure. So the procedure is altered successfully. And now if we pass a table name, for example, like employees, and then when we execute this, notice we get that table data. And similarly, if we pass countries, we get data from that respective table. Now let's quickly call this from a web page. This is the same project that we worked with in our previous videos. To this project, let's add a new web form. Let's name it dynamic table name dot ASPX. And on this page, let's paste some HTML. This HTML gives us a page that looks like what we have on the slide right here. So notice we've got a text box where we can enter our table name and then the load data button. We have a label here which is used to display any errors that we get. And then finally a grid view control to display the table data. I've used Bootstrap to style this page. If you're new to Bootstrap, please check our Bootstrap video tutorial. Now, Let's click on the button control to generate the click event handler. We need a few ADO.NET namespaces on this page. In the interest of time, let's copy them over from the other page that we have implemented in our previous video. And I'm also going to copy the code that we have in the button click event handler. Let's paste this in the button click event handler of this new page, and then we'll change the bits that are required. Now, 
If the user did not enter anything within the table name text box and when they click load data button we don't want to do anything. So first we want to check if the user has typed anything at all in this table name text box. And if you look at the ID of the table name text box, it is input table name. So let's go ahead and do the check right here. So within the button click event handler, the first thing that we are doing is checking if that text box has got anything within that. If the user has typed something into that, that's when we want to execute all this code. So we are reading the connection string and we are creating a new SQL connection object and the name of the procedure is SP dynamic table name so let's specify that right here and this stored procedure has got only one parameter and the name of the parameter is at table name so let's specify that right here and the value for that is coming from input table name text box and then we don't need to do this check so let's get rid of that and we also don't need to have all these parameters here so let's delete all the three parameters and let's format this code a bit so we are then opening the connection executing the reader and then setting the result that we get as the data source for the grid view control the ID of our grid view control on this page is GV table data so let's copy that and specify it right here. So with all these changes, let's run our application by pressing Control F5. In the table name text box, let's enter a table name that does not exist within our employee DB database and see what happens. We don't have countries one table. So at this point, when we click load data button, look at that. The page blows up with an exception. Let's handle this exception and display it within a label control. So whatever code that we have within our button click event handler, let's wrap all this within a try block. If there is any exception, we want to catch the exception and display the exception message in the error label control. The ID of the error label control is LBL error. So let's set its text property to the exception message. Now, if we are able to display the table data successfully, then we want to clear the error messages that we have already displayed within the label control. So let's set its text property to an empty string. So with these changes, let's run our application one more time. Now, if we enter a table name that does not exist, notice the error message is displayed within the label control in valid object name countries one. If we enter a table that does exist within our database, we get data from that respective table. Similarly, if we enter countries as the table name, we get data from the countries table. Now, if you look at the way we have been building our dynamic SQL statement here, we have built it by concatenating strings. And we know this is dangerous because it opened doors for SQL injection. Now, imagine what's going to happen if somebody types in this text box something like countries semicolon and then a single space and then this drop command, drop database, sales DB. What do you think is going to happen? This will be appended to this string right here. Select star from countries. We have got a semicolon. And then this is treated as a separate command, drop database sales DB. And within our SQL Server, we've got a database with the name sales DB. Look at what's going to happen when we click this load data button. So we still see countries data here, but then if we go back to SQL Server and refresh this databases folder, look at what's going to happen to the sales DB. We don't have it anymore. So this application is susceptible to SQL injection attack. Now one way to prevent the SQL injection attack is by using quote name function. So in the procedure right here, instead of directly concatenating whatever value that we have in this table name variable, I'm going to pass it to this quote name function. And in a bit, we'll understand what this quote name function is going to do. But for now, let's alter 
this procedure and create sales db database again now with the same value typed in table name text box let's click this load data button look at this we get a message saying invalid object name countries semicolon drop database sales db so you can imagine the entire value that we have typed in this table name text box is being treated as a table name and that's what this quote name function is doing here now if we refresh the databases folder Notice we still have the sales DB database there, so we are not able to inject SQL. And now let's understand what this code name function is doing. So let's copy that and use it with select statement. And within the table name text box, we have this value. So let's pass that to this code name function and see what we get back. So when we execute this, notice the value that we have passed is wrapped in a pair of square brackets which is what is forcing it to be treated as a table name so now drop database sales db is not treated as a separate SQL command since that is present along with the string here within a pair of square brackets it is treating that entire value as a table name because we don't have a table with that name we get this message invalid object name uh, you know and whatever string we have specified so if you're building dynamic SQL statements by concatenating strings it's a good practice to use codename function to prevent SQL injection attacks and here we have those two examples which we discussed just now in our next video we will discuss codename function in detail with examples Thank you for listening and have a great day.